Hello and welcome to this month's i2 Costex Coffee Break webinar. My name is Ben Baker and I am a consultant here at RIB. This month we'll be covering the fundamental workflows for those getting started with i2 Costex by explaining the hierarchy of the workbook and setup. For those of you who aren't familiar with i2 Costex, it is a fully integrated estimating solution with universal application. With supporting everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs, 2D and 3D CAD drawings, and BIM files. i2 Costex is available in a variety of options, depending on the size of your business or your estimating requirements. i2 Costex offers quick and easy on-screen takeoff and measurement that can be live linked to our comprehensive workbooks to help you save time and eliminate errors. The platform also offers a professional report writer, an auto-revisioning tool to help with new drawing versions, and much more. And as you can see, there are a large variety of file types supported by i2 Costex to help with compatibility, as we want your import and export processes to be as smooth as possible. Our latest webinar was all about the standard report writer that's available with i2 Costex. Jonathan went through all the common options available for outputting your completed estimates in a variety of formats. To watch this session or any of our other webinars, please visit us at www.i2costex.com forward slash webinars, or else you can go to the i2 Costex YouTube page. In this webinar, I would like to show you how the hierarchy works, the three types of worksheets, cost, quantity, and rate, how to navigate the workbook, and how to set up your workbook. In this illustration, we see a blown up example of how the workbook hierarchy works. Starting with the level one cost sheet, you can categorize your work items by what we call levels. This depends on how detailed you would like to be, or if a specific format should be followed. For example, a uniformat or a master format structure. In this example, I provided a two-level workbook based on the unit format structure. The main item, interiors, is listed on the level one cost sheet towards the upper left. It has a total of $982,000. That is a subtotal of interior construction, stairs, and interior finishes. If we double click into the subtotal for interior finishes, we will go down into the level two cost sheet. Here is where we will find the details for interior finishes. For this example, I'm showing floor finishes and coverings. There are three line items underneath that, which is built up to that $427,000. There are three colors to note here within Costax that the workbook takes advantage of. The black text is anything that is hard typed or a formula. The green text, as we'll talk about here in a second, is a live link and the blue text means that there is something built up below. If we take a look at tiling to toilets and corridors, we'll see where that 5,697 square feet is coming from. Double clicking into the quantity cell brings you to the quantity sheet. Within here, we see the four different takeoff items that I've done on a drawing. These four items are live linked to the quantity sheet, and that brings us our total to 5,696. The same thing was done to our rate sheet. However, most of the rate within the rate sheet is hard typed, except for lay tiles. That is a live link to a rate library. Now when the dimension groups or the rate library changes, those changes will be made within the workbook. If a rate library item changes, every word that that rate is live linked will be updated for you. Costex gives you up to 10 different cost sheets that you're able to go down into and provide detail. East cost sheet has its own quantity and rate sheet, along with a calc tab for every sheet. The calc tab is used to do back-end calculations that you don't want shown on your levels. Now that we have a quick overview of the workbook hierarchy, let's go ahead and look at Costex itself, and we'll dive a little deeper into it. Here you'll see a blank workbook. And in the very beginning, you're gonna have a blank workbook or you'll be importing something through a CSV import template to bring in your own. 
If you don't have something already pre-made, I'm going to show you how we can quickly generate something based off of a code library using dimension groups and applying some rates. These first eight columns are system columns. They can't be changed. Uh, what I mean by that is the headings cannot be changed. There is system information built into these yellow columns that provide cost extra detail in order to be formatted into a report. You are given 50 user columns that you're able to customize and bring out information from your workbook and the levels below. You can create a new heading for these workbook, these columns, by double clicking into the workbook, going to column names, and changing the name here. I'm going to call this concrete cubic yards. And we'll talk about why I did that here in a minute. First of all, the egg code column is used for reference. You will be able to have a numbering system or a code library here to help you navigate your workbook and show it a little easier. Description will be a clarification, a cost item, a dimension group, or whatever you need to describe within your workbook. Quantity can either be live, linked, or hard typed information. The unit will be your unit of measure. A rate, again, can be hard typed, live linked, or a, an Excel formula. For the level one rate, I like to have a formula of the total column divided by the quantity column. A subtotal is where we will double click and build up our detail in the level two cost sheet. A factor could be a margin or a markup, and the total is the product of your F column and your G column. So let's go ahead and go to our code library. I'm gonna be using the unit format for this example. Expand these categories. And now we're going to select them all. Holding down the shift key, I'm allowed able to select everything. Drag into my description column. And let's apply some formatting so it can be read a little easier. You can also insert rows so we can create some space between our different line items. And you can delete rows if you need to. You can also copy and paste or cut the row to paste it somewhere else. Now that we have our level one structure set up, I'm going to double click into my subtotal. Here I'm within my foundations and it tells me I'm still within my cost sheet and I'm on level two and rec can return to level one if I chose to. By double clicking further into my subtotal column, it brings me down to more levels. Each one of these arrows will allow me to go back to a certain level. Now that we are in level two for foundations, I'm going to go ahead and expand these subcategories and drag that information in from my level two detail. Apply some more bolding. And we're going to add some spaces to help this be separate and a little more organized. For this example, I'm going to talk about slab on grade because I already have a dimension group for slab on grade. It's going to make it a little easier to understand, and you can use this as a good guideline of how you can set up your workbook. By dragging my dimension group into my description column, it will change the standard slab on grade from the code library to what I have for my dimension group. Or you can relabel this description to have it say what you need it to. If you have other dimensions that you need to pull through, clicking on the quantity type will allow you to pick which dimension you want to carry through. You can also assign a rate library item if you have something already, or apply a hard type rate for this particular item. Clicking update will add it for you. There you can see this is the $12 I manually entered, and I have my live link. This was automatically populated for you with a basic Excel expression. Again, as I mentioned before, the total column is a product of the subtotal and the factor column. So if I wanted to add a 10% waste, it will add it for me here. Now I do have a rate for slab on grade, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete my $12 and go to my rate library. I'm gonna drag that in here and click update. Now I have a live linked rate for my floor concrete. If for some reason I need to update my rate, 
I can double click into my rate library and access the rate properties. Or I can go to my workbook tab and show source, which also brings me to my rate properties. Here I can use this little icon and see the, see the assembly for this rate. However, if I make any changes here within the rate properties, it will change wherever that rate is live linked within your workbook. So if I want to only edit this particular item, I'll need to click on my rate once more, hold down the Alt key, and drag that in. That now has changed it to a build up rate. I know this by the blue text instead of a green. Double clicking, I am now able to see my rate assembly. Let's go ahead and expand those two dimension places so I can see what we're looking at. I can change my concrete thickness if it's bigger, my hard fill depth if I need to, and all of these are formulas based on my information up here, so I don't need to update anything else. Again, if you make changes to your rate library, it will be affected here. So if you want to go ahead and show source for this, you can make the change. Now that I have a basic rate assembly built up, I want to take advantage of this custom user column that I've set up. I'm going to try and pull through the concrete to the level 1 for a high level summary. Pressing equals C6 will give me my 0.02 for my concrete per square foot. Go ahead and expand that so I can see my decimal places. Let's go up a level now and tell Costax to find that information I just put there. By typing in equals x sum rate user 1 in parentheses, this is telling Costax to find the information within my rate sheet. If I change this rate to QTY, it will tell it to find the information within my quantity sheet. The one in parentheses is showing you which user column you're telling it to find an information in. Let's go ahead and press enter. And now you'll see I have my 0.02 brought up for me. This can be done with labor, material, equipment, you can also do it for margin or burden. However you would like to set up your assemblies within your rate, or however you would like to pull out data within your quantity, can be carried forward with for you with this one expression. But 0.02 is not the total concrete I want, so I'm going to go ahead and tell this to multiply by C17. Now I have 288 cubic yards of concrete based off of my square footage. If I go back up a level again, I can now do x, or sorry, equals x sum user, and we're going to tell it to find column 1. That is routed up for me, and now I have a high level detail of what my total cubic yards for my foundation is. Now let's bring in a quantity for this and assign a rate. I'm going to use my overall GFA for this so I can have a total square foot for the project for my foundations. I'm going to change this to square foot, and here I'm going to equal my H2 and divide it by C2. Did multiplication by mistake. There we go. $4.44 per square foot for my foundation. That is a very basic way of how you can start structuring your first workbook template. By doing this and live linking your dimension groups and your rates within your level 2 or level 3 information, you're able to have an estimate template ready for you for every new project you have. By having standard dimension groups pre-assigned and created for your estimators, they're able to start doing their takeoff immediately and having everything populate your estimate without having to export and bring in from Excel to another program. Let's go ahead and take a look at my elemental estimate, and you can see what a built-out estimate template looks like. Here you'll see I have the exact same structure that I showed you just moments ago, but with a lot more information. I've used my four user columns to be code columns, so if I want to sort my workbook based on code and generate a new one to have it sorted a specific way, I'm able to do that here by generate workbook group by code. If I generate it based on the unit format, these two subheadings and these three subheadings will be on the level 2 cost sheet, 
whereas structure and shell interiors will be on the level one. That'll keep it cleaner and make it look a little nicer. Master format here isn't shown because I have all that information within my level two. For my section, I have building cost, site cost, and project cost. So again, if I would like to sort this based on per section of the project, I'm able to do that by generating a workbook by code. Double clicking into foundations, I'm able to see my level two cost sheet. Here I have my dimension groups already linked out from the takeoff I've done, and I have their rate assemblies pre-made already. Here you'll see the master format. These items here are my heading codes. Because I have no rate buildup for these codes, these are single codes for these particular line items. However, being that I have a rate assembly for this here, I have to have a heading code for the strip foundations. Within the rate assembly, I have all of my master format codes here to separate them out and make them sorted, sortable by generating workbook by code. I hope you were able to learn something with how the hierarchy works and how to set up your workbook. In conclusion, I'd like to cover a few things that we went over today. I2 Costax workbooks were created to help organize information. By generating your workbook by code or by creating it by a code library, you're able to help organize your information to make it easier to give to your owner or client. The workbooks are user-defined and not pre-formatted. You will start out with a blank workbook and will have to build it up. However, if you have an existing template, using a CSV import template and following the steps by importing that into Costax will generate what you're already familiar with or, as I already showed, building your estimate template out of a code library. The cost sheet contains quantity sheet, rate sheet, and a calc tab. Each cost sheet has all three of those different sheets. The calc tab is provided to you on the quantity sheet and the rate sheet, along with the cost sheet. So you're able to do back cal backend calculations without it cluttering up your detail. The workbooks are similar to Excel and use a variety of functions and expressions. Costex has a lot of native expressions that it uses, much like the XSUM user or XSUM rate user. You can find a lot of these within the help file provided to you in Costex by pressing the F1 key, or you can use a lot of the familiar expressions that you probably used in Excel. The dimension groups and rate libraries can be live linked to create an estimate template. By doing this, you expedite the process by having it set up and ready to go for your quantity surveyors or estimators so they don't have to export and or drag and drop your information to a separate program. It's ready to go so they can start doing takeoff as soon as they get their drawings. Thank you for joining me this month to learn more about Costax. It is my hope that webinars like these will help you learn to use Costax and grow with us. If there are any questions, please feel free to reach out to our support staff by using the email shown on the screen. Thank you.